All right, probably the YouTube video with the worst background ever, but I want to give you my thoughts after being home for a week after having a massive heart attack. So here's my story. 50 years old, fitness guy, ate super clean. Uh, the week I had the heart attack, Strava shows me doing a couple of bike rides, almost 40 miles that week, a couple of jogs for about six miles, and then a five mile hike. Ironically, fell on the floor walking into the gym to sign in. So, and it was actually pretty bad. Three major blockages. Um, they did manual chest compressions on me the entire way to the hospital. EMT saved my life. Luckily, I was only 500 yards from the fire station when it happened. Um, in a medically induced coma for 13 days. They put me in a special bed to lower my body temperature to 91 degrees. Uh, fairly rough. I was in there for almost three weeks. But I'm out, still kicking ass. Just wanted to share some of my thoughts with you guys. So if it happens to you, uh, the first week home after your heart attack, days one and two, I would say sleep as much as you can. Let your body rest and heal. But do try to get up for an hour or two, whether it's just to eat or maybe watch a little TV. Get up and try to move around just a little bit. Even if you're sleeping for 22, 23 hours a day for the first day or two, that's all right. Um, also suggest leaving the light on in the bathroom um, and leave the light on in the room because when you sit up out of bed you want to give yourself a minute to catch your breath and then use a walker or whatever you need to do to get to the bathroom uh, don't let your ego get in the way of your recovery the first night home I actually fell in the bathroom and split my eyebrow open pretty good so don't do that rule number two Take all your meds. No excuses, no bullshit. That's going to save your life. Also, drink lots of good, clean water. Uh, it's good for your body, and getting up to go to the bathroom help you practice your balance and rebuild your muscles. Turn off your phone. You know, nothing is that important that you got to hear the phone ring and get up to answer it and deal with people's bullshit. Avoid stress of any kind. Plus, you're probably going to be pretty damn grouchy and pissy for the first couple of days. Uh, at least until you start seeing some improvement. It took three or four days for me, but you, real, you will see some really quick improvements. Now, day two and three, you really need to get up out of bed. No excuses. days two and three you need to get out of bed no more meals in bed even shuffling to the kitchen or living room to watch some tv or eat meals would be a big improvement for you movement is medicine And during my two and a half weeks in the hospital, 13 days on the ventilator, I also caught pneumonia. Thanks, guys. But I lost 30 pounds of muscle. Crazy. I was literally not even strong enough to stand up. It took two nurses and a support belt to get me into the bathroom. But you're going to need to start getting some food and calories back into your body. Some of the things that I found to be really helpful... was um, just getting calories in. First couple of days, you're going to be pretty helpless and you're going to need a spouse or a really good friend or even a paid caregiver to cook for you. I could barely lift a half gallon of orange juice the first couple of days. Food tasted like crap, really salty crap. First meal, I started with a bowl of soup, slurped about half the broth and ate a few pieces of the chicken and dumplings in it. And that was all I could get down. Food portions were really, really small. Um, some other good ideas, liquid calories. The Ensure shakes are good. Um, orange juice, apple juice, almond milk will help you feed your body. My first real meal was some low-sodium cream of mushroom soup, which I don't normally eat, mixed with rice and a chopped-up small burger patty. Did that a few nights for dinner. Um, had a Chick-fil-A patty one night. A little high in sodium, but... You know, sometimes you just got to get calories in your body. Other things that proved really helpful, some of the Sargento balanced breaks, 
uh, cheese, dried fruit, and nuts. Try to get the unsalted nuts. I was eating bags of the unsalted mixed nuts that were really good. Easy to eat a couple of handfuls of them, get some protein and some healthy calories. Uh, some cold grapes were really nice, kind of sweet and healthy and filling. Um, pudding cups and fruit cups. Um, I could get an easy breakfast from the fruit cups. That helped a lot, even if you're not really hungry. It's sweet enough to where you can choke it down and it's not too bad. So first couple of days, you're going to really have to rely on packages and some processed foods. Do what you got to do to get some calories in you. Um, like I said, fruit cups, chocolate pudding was really good, easy to eat. Um, if my stomach got upset, which it did the first couple of meals, I do maybe like a half dose or so of Pepto Bismol. Just make sure that doesn't interfere with any of your meds. Day three, you need to get outside and walk. Again, movement is medicine. This was probably the biggest psychological boost for me. And I really recommend get one of the walking wheelchairs. It's kind of like a walker, but it has wheels and handbrakes and a seat. First time I went out to walk, I only made it four driveways. You know, that's the whole thing was so psychologically crushing. Like I said, I jogged six miles that week before I went in, biked 40 miles, and now I can only walk four can driveways. So, second time I went out to walk, I made it six driveways. Third time, I did 10 driveways, and man, I felt like Superman. By the fourth day, I could do the whole block and back, it felt really great. Rebuild your muscles, your heart, and your lungs. By day four or five, you should be eating about three times a day, walking once or twice a day, but remember to take it easy. Eat and nap. Uh, nap some more and walk. Walk and nap. Listen to your body. You know, eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired. But you should be aiming to get out of bed at least 10 to 12 hours a day even if it's just sitting up in a chair to watch movies or listen to music. And there may be times when you don't want to get up or it's easier to just lay in bed than it is to get up and eat, but this game is serious. You need to be tough and be a fighter. You have family and friends rooting for you, and I'm rooting for you. So you gotta tell yourself, you can't be a pussy, you gotta get up and fight this. By day seven, I feel a thousand percent better. That was also a big psychological boost for me because I had been really fit, ate really clean, and they told me it takes up to a week to recover for every one day in the hospital. So I got a couple of months of recovery ahead of me, but I'm making a lot of progress. Besides, if you live through it, the universe seems to have a plan for you. So you gotta make your time count, whatever it is that you wanna do. Volunteer for the Boy Scouts, take church groups on camping trips, turn off your television, Teach kids to cook or use hand tools or ride bikes or shoot guns. Pass on whatever knowledge and skills you have. You may also want to explore some deeper subjects like philosophy and spirituality. YouTube can actually offer a wealth of information. Learning to meditate is never a bad idea either. And there's some solid channels on YouTube. A couple of my favorites you should check out. Dharma Nation, D-H-A-R-M-A, -A, Dharma Nation, and Hinduism Today for some advice on living a good life. Just be open-minded and listen to their talks. It's just really good, common, solid advice. Nothing to preach or anything, but it's a whole lot more with the spiritual connections and not so much the religiosity. So I'm going to be doing updates hopefully every week or so, but just want to let you know you're not in the fight alone. There's nobody else out there rooting for you. And it's also been emotionally crushing for me. Fuck, this is hard. <sighs> but you gotta be tough. You live through it. I survived what killed a lot of people. My girlfriend sat outside the ICU unit and they had me on the ventilator and there's a big TV screen that listed all the patients' names. And there's a good percentage of the guys never came back. I was lucky because I was in really good shape and that helped me a lot, but a lot of those guys my age or even younger, died on that table. They just weren't strong enough or resilient enough to bounce back. So, my three mottos for life, be strong, be generally useful, 
be hard to kill. See you in a week or so.